Hello there and welcome to another Issues and Answers, a production of the National Television Network and the Government Information Service. I'm your host for this edition, Jessie Leons, from the Department of Sustainable Development within the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training. Thursday, 16th of September 2021, St. Lucia joins the rest of the world to observe the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. From 1994, that was 27 years ago, the 16th of September has been observed as a day to promote activities that support the objectives of the Vienna Convention and its Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. And since then, St. Lucia has registered its own achievements in this regard. Uh, we have successfully met several targets as a signatory. Uh, joining me in, in studio this time around from St. Lucia's Ozone Unit within the Department of Sustainable Development for a sit-down is Ms. Shanna Scott. Thank you so much, Ms. Scott, for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. First of all, tell us a little bit about the ozone layer and why interventions took place at the international level to pres preserve it. Okay, so the ozone layer is a protective layer, a protective shield that's located between 15 to 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And what it does, it filters or protects us from harmful ultraviolet or UV rays. Now these rays can have adverse consequences not only for human health but also for plants and animal life. So what happened is in the 1970s scientists discovered that there was a group of chemicals that was damaging the ozone layer and they later become known as ozone depleting substances. So internationally the international community they rallied and they agreed to phase out these groups of chemicals, mm -hmm. which led to this, um, the signing of the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. Okay, now speak to us about these substances. What substances or chemicals deplete the ozone layer? Okay, so they are uh, madman chemicals containing halogens, for example, chlorine and bromine, bromine sorry, that will determine to be the cause of this damage. And collectively, as I mentioned before, they are known as ozone depleting substances. One group of these chemicals are known as chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs for short. And back then they were very popular and they could have been found widely in air conditioners and refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Also, the another group of chemicals called hydrochlorofluorocarbons or it's, it's CFCs, also um, methyl bromides and halons are also proven to be ozone depleting substances. And these um, chemicals could be found in a wide variety of products that we use in our everyday life. For okay. example, um, computer, um, computers, electronics and parts, um, um, car dashboards, even shoe soles these chemicals will use to make. Also, a lot of fruits and vegetables will fumigate it with um, methyl bromide to kill pests. Wow. So what exactly happens in the atmosphere? Because it's an invisible, an invisible layer. So what exactly happens when these chemicals are let out into the air? What happens to the atmosphere? Ozone layer. Okay, so if we take, for example, a, a CFC molecule or CFCs when they release into the atmosphere, as was mentioned, CFCs contain chlorine. Mm -hmm. So when it's released into the atmosphere, it's absorbed by UV radiation and a chlorine um, atom is released. Now, one chlorine atom has the potential of damaging 100,000 
ozone molecules. So when it's released into the atmosphere and it causes so much damage, it upsets the natural balance or the natural chemical reactions taking place in the atmosphere. Because the, there are a lot of chemical reactions taking place in the atmosphere because there are other chemicals in the atmosphere as we learn at school. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that the rate of destruction is far outweighs the rate of the creation of ozone, which leads to the thinning or damage of the ozone layer. Okay, now this is what's happening to the ozone layer. What effects uh, does this depletion have on life on Earth, human and other? Okay, so that's a very good question. So increased UV exposure reaching the Earth has been linked to increased cases of skin cancer for humans and also eye cataracts. Also, there's consequences for um, plant life in that you may get lower yielding crops and also animal life. If you look at, for example, um, increased UV ra radiation in the ocean can kill phytoplankton, which is the first block of the marine food chain. Mm -hmm. So there's dire consequences for human health, um, plant, animal life, but also stuff that we may not, things that we may not think of. For example, I'm sure if you have your car and it's sprayed over a period of time, you may see that it's losing color, mm -hmm. but we may not attribute that to increased exposure to UV radiation, but actu that actually what's happened as it eats away on the paint of our cars. Interesting. So not all doom and gloom. There has actually been work done in the last couple of decades. I understand that the work that has happened through the Montreal Protocol has been one of the most successful um, unified approaches taken on the global scale uh, through the Montreal Protocol on substances uh, that deplete the ozone layer in 1987. We had all 197 countries of the world committed to eliminating the use of the ozone depleting substances. Speak to us in the national context. What has what progress has Saint Lucia made in terms of achieving targets of the protocol? Okay, so Saint Lucia became a party to the Montreal Protocol in July of 1993, and since then we have committed to phasing out ozone depleting substances um, in line with the international phase out targets, not um, well by 2030. Not only that, we've had major successes in that in 2008, for example, we phased out completely the first group of ozone depleting substances, CFCs, as was mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And that was a great feat for us because we did it two years ahead of the international schedule, which was 2010. Also from 2011, we have um, done work to phase out the second group of ozone depleting substances, HCFCs. And uh, right now we're at a 49% um, reduction, which is way ahead of the schedule, whereas we're supposed to be at 35% mm -hmm. in 2020. So we can see right now that we're well on our way to phasing out ozone depleting substances. Also, we have put in place um, regulations for the import and export of these substances. Also, a quota and licensing system that will help guide and govern us. Um, we've also trained refrigeration technicians, our local refrigeration technician, in good management practices, which would help in, in eliminating or reducing the amount of ozone depleting substances that um, get into the atmosphere when mm -hmm. servicing this equipment. And also we've trained customs officials to help prevent illegal trade of these substances on our borders. Okay, thanks for that. We're speaking to Ms. Shanna Scott from the National Ozone Unit, uh, ahead of the observance of the, the International Day of for the Preservation of the ozone layer. We're talking ozone depleting substances. What St. Lucia has done so far as a signatory uh, to uh, the uh, the Vienna Convention and its Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. We are due for a break. When we come back, we're going to get into the role of the Department of Sustainable Development in this national effort to eliminate ozone depleting substances and also speak on uh, the progress that has seen, that St. Lucia has been making more specifically in terms of this year's theme, the international theme uh, for the Interna International Day uh, for the Preservation of uh, the Ozone Layer. Stay with us. 
What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is an edition of Issues and Answers on the GIS NTN, and we are bringing to you word on the observance, the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. We're speaking to someone from the National Ozone Unit in the person of Ms. Shanna Scott. And uh, before uh, going to break, we were just speaking on the effects of ozone depleting substances on the ozone layer as well as the interventions that have been made in the last 30 years or so close to 30 years uh, to reverse the damage that has so far been done a work going on by every single country around the world and saint lucia has also been uh, registering some success uh, quite a bit of success in terms of its part in meeting targets of the vienna convention and its montreal protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer uh, Ms. Scott, I want to ask, what is the role of the Department of Sustainable Development? We know that is the, the department from which your unit, the National Ozone Unit, operates from. Speak to us about the department and uh, its role in this national effort to eliminate ozone-depleting substances. Okay, so the Department of Sustainable Development is the focal point for a number of international multilateral and environmental agreements, including the Montreal Protocol. The National Ozone Unit, which is housed within the department, is responsible for the day-to-day -day activities that will help us to meet our Montreal Protocol phase-out targets. Um, such activities include enforcement of our legislation, which with the help of key agencies like Department of Commerce and the Customs and Excise Department, the training and certification of our local air conditioning and refrigeration technicians, also um, training of enforcement officers, and of course, um, implementation of public education and awareness activities so the public is aware of what's going on and how they can get involved. Wonderful. The theme for this year's observance of the, the International Day uh, of the, for the preservation of the ozone layer is the Montreal Protocol keeping us, our food, and our vaccines cool. Uh, it obviously draws focus on the significance of refrigerants in the air conditioning and refrigeration industries. Now we know the cold chain is critical to the preservation of food and medicines. We're in a global pandemic and that is heightened not only in, in conversation about vaccines, but also the importance of getting food to certain parts of the world. Uh, what progress has St. Lucia made or is making rather to ensure that the cooling systems that sectors and residents, the country benefits from are sustainable or eco-friendly? Okay, so we have been promoting more, not only ozone, but climate friendly options or alternatives when it comes to cooling. And not only that, we have started training our local refrigeration technicians to use these alternatives safely. Also, we are working to finalize St. Lucia's national cooling strategy, which would introduce minimum performance standards. And what that means in, in general is that we want to ensure that the equipment that comes in is not only efficient but it will not waste energy and that it will not put a dent in our pocket at the end of the day. Okay now speak to us about the other work that is ongoing. I know uh, in addition to that in, in terms of the response in terms of introducing uh, more sustainable eco-friendly uh, apparatus for cooling systems what other work is happening by the National Ozone Unit 
under and through the uh, Montreal Protocol uh, right now? Okay, well, I cannot speak about the Montreal Protocol without speaking about the Kigali Amendment, okay. which is the most recent amendment to the Montreal Protocol. Now, to put it into context, um, the substitutes or the replacements for the CFCs and the HCFCs that are being replaced are hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs. Now, HFCs are not ozone depleting substances, but they are greenhouse gases with very high greenhouse um, global warming potential, which means they have that ability to trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere. And I'm sure by that you can deduce that they would in effect um, contribute to global warming and climate change. Therefore, in October 2016, parties to the Montreal Protocol agreed to sign on to the, well, to pass the, to, to adopt the Kigali Amendment to mm -hmm. the Montreal Protocol, which will now call to phase down the use of HFCs. So what we have been doing, St. Lucia is not a party, but we have taken step first to ratify. Okay. <clears throat> For example, um, we implemented activities under a project called the Kigali Amendment Enabling Activities Project, and the activities, as the name suggests, would enable us to ratify the amendment. And we're happy to report that earlier this year, 20, um, April 2021, we received approval from Cabinet to ratify this amendment. So St. Lucia soon, hopefully by the end of the year, um, we should have ratified the Kigali Amendment. So as you can see, the Montreal Protocol is wearing more than one cap now. We're not only protecting the ozone layer, but we're also contributing to mitigating the effects of climate change. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's quite a bit of work ongoing. You've been at the, you've been with the ozone unit from 2015, a lot of work happening, and we know even prior to that, uh, Countries all over the world have been working assiduously to ensure that they are in alignment with the Montreal Protocol, the Vienna Convention overall. Is, is this work simply helping to stop further depletion of the ozone layer, or is it helping to reverse the effects that we've so far um, uh, imposed on the ozone layer? Okay, so if we... Um, go back to what we first stated that there's always chemical reactions going on in the ozone layer. It's just that with these ozone depleting substances, these ODSs, that it's disrupting the chain of events, that there's more damage taking place than the creation of ozone. Mm -hmm. So in eliminating these chemicals from the atmosphere, as the Montreal Protocol has aided, there have been research that has proven that the ozone layer has now began healing itself since the implementation of the Montreal Protocol, so much so that by middle century, they have estimated that the ozone layer would be recovered. So we can, that's one of the reasons why the Montreal Protocol is deemed such a huge environmental success around the globe. And also just to note that the Montreal Protocol has successfully phased out 98% of ozone depleting substances. Wonderful. How can St. Lucians get more involved? Because I, the, the first question is, can we reverse this? Can we, you know, the, the question is with that and climate change, can we reverse these hard effects? But now, how can St. Lucians get involved? How can, you know, St. Lucians move in on this movement, this cause to eliminate ozone depleting substances, particularly HCFCs by 2030? Okay, so sometimes we might hear about an issue and think that it's so far from us and probably we cannot get involved, but there are a number of steps that I took note of that we can all take part in. For example, we can protect ourselves and our families by wearing sunscreen when we go out. Also protect our eyes by wearing um, sunglasses or probably wearing long sleeves when we go out. Also to take care of our um, equipment our refrigeration and air conditioning equipment at home. Also, we should note that older um, equipment, older refrigeration equipment that we have do contain ozone depleting substances because probably when we purchase them, these protocols had not come into effect. So we want to ensure that when we disposing of these 
equipment that we do it in a safe and sound manner that protects our environment on earth and also the ozone layer and also we have the purchasing power we have the power to drive the That's market right. mm -hmm. so when we purchase new refrigeration equipment we could look for the label that says ozone friendly or climate friendly also there's labels such as cfc cfc free it's cfc free energy efficient mm -hmm. so when we buy these we not only protect the environment but we're also protecting our pocket because they consume less energy so we do our part as well by being a sustainable consumer and finally if we have equipment refrigeration equipment that's damaged um, we could also check um, check them for leaks as well so if we know that there's a leak or it's damaged we should ensure that it's repaired first before it's recharged to prevent um, ozone depleting substances from getting into the environment and also we did mention that we train technicians refrigeration technicians so ensure that you use a certified technician from the government when servicing so you can they're issued an, a technician ID card so you can always ask them when they come to present their technician ID card so you know that they've gone through the suitable tra um, training that will enable them to handle your equipment safely wonderful Shana it has been a pleasure having you here and giving us all of this information as we come upon the 16th of September uh, the International Day uh, for the preservation of the ozone layer I'd like to thank you our viewers for watching Shana thank you again my name is Jesse Leon signing off for now we do hope that you can take this information read up a little bit more go on to a browser and get some more information on the work that not only st. Lucia is doing but countries around the world uh, in a adherence to uh, the Vienna Convention and its Montreal pr Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. Quite a bit of work has been happening to reverse the effects and to heal our ozone layer and so that we can have a better earth, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shanna Scott uh, from the National Ozone Unit. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. Uh, do stay tuned for more uh, programming on NTN and uh, goodbye. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.